Good morning all, it's post bag. And uh, first off are these two, which I think are both from Banggood. This one certainly says Banggood. This is from the Singapore office. And there's a nice picture of uh, the tower at Changi Airport there. This one, however, doesn't say Banggood and is come via the Netherlands. But uh, judging by the timing, I think they are both Banggood. Let's have a look. Okay, let's do this Netherlands one first because I'm intrigued to know whether this actually is from Banggood. Okay, and yes it is. Yes, this is their um, DDS signal generator kit. Uh, you can see on here that it requires, or it has, uh, an LCD, a 16 by 2 uh, alphanumeric LCD. Uh, what else can we see on this PCB? We've got an amplitude pot and an offset pot. A switch, in fact several switches here. Oh yes, up, down, left and right, and a reset switch. Uh, these are the output sockets, these um, BNC connectors that are in the pack there. Now the only thing that I can see about this which I think is going to be a big problem is that it requires 5 volts, plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, so three power supplies to get this thing up and running. That's going to be a bit of a hassle. So this is the item on Banggood's website. It's the DDS Function Signal Generator Module DIY Kit, Sign, Square, Sawtooth and Triangle Wave. Uh, it's SKU179817, priced at £7.78. But full disclosure here, um, I didn't pay for this item. It was sent to me at no cost and I'm going to do a review of it. I'm going to do that review on my main channel because of course it's very related to electronics. Now I don't have an awful lot of test equipment, in fact almost none at all, so this could be quite handy. Uh, let's have a look what we've got here. That's an 80 Mega 16A PU and also there's a little LM358 on there, so this is the main chip, it's just a microcontroller programmed presumably to provide all these waveforms, uh, sockets, these are the two BNC connectors, two pots here. Uh, this is the 16x2 LCD, sort of old school uh, alphanumeric type, so 1602A there, and the printed circuit board which does look very nice actually. Okay, next we have the other Banggood uh, kit, and this is a DIY oscilloscope kit. This looks very, very interesting. Um, again, full disclosure, this was supplied at no cost uh, for me to do a review. But I think this one's going to be quite interesting. Ah, user manual. Excellent. Now when I saw the price of this kit, uh, £15 approximately, I thought it was going to be one of these ones which was sort of based originally on an Arduino and a basic display, but this seems to be quite a bit better than that. This is a colour LCD. Uh, my guess is that it's a 320 by 240 I don't know exactly. And the chip here, which is pre-soldered on the board, is actually an ARM Cortex-M3, not uh, an 80 mega processor. So this looks like it should be reasonably good. Now there is always going to be a compromise with this sort of uh, kit and I'll show you what it is on the Banggood web page. So this is the item on Banggood's website. It's the DIY digital oscilloscope kit electronic learning kit. Doesn't tell you a lot there. Uh, £15 and 3p but again I disclose that I got this uh, at no cost. Now let's have a look at the spec down here. Uh, using ARM Cortex M3 processor, it's an ST processor, a 2.4 inch color TFT display. It doesn't give the resolution. Supply voltage is 9 volts, uh, so we don't have the multi power supply that the DDS signal generator requires. This is just one voltage. And I seem to remember looking at the um, spec of this that it splits that into its own plus and minus voltages internally on the board. Now this is the big compromise, uh, 0 to 200 kilohertz analog bandwidth. So it is a slow oscilloscope. 
um, it's not going to be any use for uh, megahertz signals. But for audio and, you know, most sort of simple projects, even microprocessor, PWM will always be running much, much slower than this. This is pretty good, uh, going by the price, £15. 12-bit um, A to D, actually. And uh, I know that my O1 oscilloscope, oscilloscope only has an 8-bit A to D, so that's a pretty reasonable spec. Um, it also... the the Arduino ones, uh, some of them only measure between 0 and 5 volts, but I know that this can measure both positive and negative going signals up to uh, maximum input voltage, 50 volts peak to peak. Um, I just spotted some photos. So there's a picture of all the parts laid out. That's the board, and uh, very helpfully they pre-solder the uh, microcontroller onto the board. That would be pretty tricky to solder because of the fine pitch. Um, there's the unit in operation with this cable that is provided, uh, testing some sort of board there. And uh, there are the two boards, the fully populated uh, analog board or main board and the display which sits on top. Yes, that's it. So here's the uh, bag of bits that goes on the main board. And there are quite a few surface mount parts um, including this chip here, which is a TLO84 quad op amp, um, but that's got a reasonable pitch, so that should be fairly easy to solder. This one, as I say, they've done for you. I've got quite high hopes for this. Um, an oscilloscope, which is not one of these basic 5 volt only ones, for 15 quid. I think that's pretty amazing, but of course, you know, proof of the eating is, no, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We'll see when this thing's built up, so I'll do a video of building this thing up and then testing it. There's quite a good instruction manual here, which is a sort of step-by-step -step, uh, guide to building, uh, sticking all the various parts on. That looks pretty reasonable. Now, this one is from Polida Electrical Hong Kong Limited. The eBay seller name is Polida 2008. So let's open this. And this is just two little tiny 8-pin dual inline chips, and they are CA3080. Now, these are transconductance op-amps, or to give them their full official name, Operational Transconductance Amplifiers. And uh, these are for the ETI Vocoda project that I'm building. And these are generally used as VCAs, voltage-controlled amplifiers, although actually they're not voltage controlled, they're current controlled. So you have to do a bit of jiggery pokery to get that converted. Now I've got these two older type ones, the CA3080, and also came in in the last few weeks, uh, these which are the LM13600. And I'll just now go to the uh, Vocoda article to see what that says about the difference between these two OTAs, Operational Transconductance Amplifiers. Now, in the Vocoda article, uh, the OTA, the CA3080 OTA, Transconductance Op Amp, is here. Uh, this is the older type, and uh, it's used as a voltage-controlled amplifier to control the level of noise coming out of the noise generator up here. But as I say, it's got a current controlled gain input, which is just here. And so the circuit uses this transistor to do a voltage to current conversion in order to linearly control the uh, gain of this OTA. Now the other OTA, the LM13600, is actually over here in the analysis synthesis section. This is the uh, transconductance amplifier here. Again, a transistor here to convert a voltage to a current control to control the gain of this amplifier. Now it says here, IC6 is an OTA, Operational Transconductance Amplifier, which could have been our old friend the CA3080. Well, they do use their old friend the CA3080 in the noise section, but a better device, the LM13600, is now available, and that's the other one that I bought. It achieves very low distortion by having linearizing diodes at the input. Now the CA3080 may have more distortion, but 
because it's being used in the noise generator section, it probably doesn't matter that much. So I guess that's why they use the CA30A for controlling the level of noise, but then switch to this new one, the LM13600. Of course, there is a, an actually a newer one, the LM13700, but I bought 13600s, uh, A, because they were available and reasonably cheap, and B, because I want to stick as far as I can to the original circuit. Um, they're using this in the section where actual voice and music and audio, uh, rather than just noise, are controlled through the system. So I'm going to make a video where I have a little play with this CA30A uh, OTA, this one here. Let's just zoom in on that. Um, I'm going to wire it up in as simple a form as I can. I don't think I'm going to need this um, preset here, which puts a very slight offset here on one of the input pins. Uh, 1K5 to ground, 470K to this pot, which spans plus and minus 12 volts. That's going to have a very small steering effect on the voltage there. Uh, there's another preset here, which again goes between plus 12 and minus 12. Another 470K, which slightly steers, um, what would you say, the voltage at the output of this op amp. Um, so I'll miss all that off, I think. I'll just have the OTA and this transistor and some driver um, op amps here. Now, the output of the OTA, it says, is high impedance, which is slightly odd. Uh, so this buffer op-amp I'll probably include as well in order to get a low impedance output from the circuit. But I'll have a play with that uh, in another video. Now, if you are in the market for an operational transconductance amplifier, um, these chips are quite difficult to uh, find these days, but I found this. Uh, by far the cheapest offering on eBay. Uh, this is from Polida 2008, the CA3080A, uh, sorry, CA3080E, and uh, it's $1.48 each, so that's less than a pound each. And uh, the LM13600 seems to have dropped off the end of my purchase list. It must have been quite a long time ago that I bought them, but I'm pretty sure I got them from this place, uh, Sharp Seller 2000, very good feedback, 99.6%, £8.99 for 10 of these dual transconductance op amps, LM13600. And so this little lot was what was in today's post bag. Cheerio.